Hey guys, Gun and Ross and Percy back once again today. Ow! <laughs> what a great way to start a video today. We are checking out uh, the top 10 games I'm hoping to complete for 2022. Now this was inspired by, uh, I'm saying Retro Gamer Girl, I'm trying to think of what her new channel name is. Forgive me M. I'm pretty sure it's, oh crap. Sorry, it's Team Retro. Sorry, Em, I completely forgot what your new name of your channel was for YouTube and for Instagram for that matter. So anyway, she had tagged me in Instagram to show my top 10 games I'm hoping to complete in 2022. So basically a challenge. And this is the stack of games that I have chosen. So to start off with, we are going to be looking at finishing Halo Infinite. Now, you guys know that I'm slowly getting my way through reviewing each of the games in the Halo series, and this is definitely one that I want to review when we get to the very end, but I have started playing it and having a really good time with this one here, especially online. It just brings back those massively great memories of my childhood, you know, playing Halo after school. Uh, it's just so awesome. And this I am thoroughly look, looking to complete um, in, in regards to the campaign um, in, at some stage. And this was one that my little nasty little cat, <laughs> Percival, no, he's a beautiful cat. He just doesn't like me picking him up when I, you know, when it's inconvenient for him. Um, this was the game that he picked as well. So I'm looking forward to playing this one. Next on my list is to complete is going to be SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for the Bikini Bottom Rehydrator. Now, whenever I can get a game that gets that glossy HD treatment or especially a remake, I will always pick it up and I've heard nothing but good things about this. Now, I must admit, I haven't really seen too much in regards to the SpongeBob TV series. For some reason, when I was growing up, it just kind of slipped on, slipped on the radar but I do thoroughly enjoy watching it now, and I really want to see what the big hype about this game is. It just looks like a really fun game. I'm always a big fan of those sort of, you know, platform adventure games like Ratchet and & Clank and Spyro and Crash, or Crash is probably more of a, a linear sort of game, but um, this one, you know, given the more of a, an ability to, you know, have a bit more of an open world, I'm looking forward to playing this. So yes, that is definitely on my list to complete this year. This one has been in my collection forever in a day, and I always started, and I never finish it. So this time around, I'm doing it, guys. We are going to complete a world of Final Fantasy, and you know, just looking at this cover, I love it to bits. All the little chibi characters, and you got all your, you know, your great characters throughout the history of Final Fantasy, and you got all the that you can see on here. You got all your you know, your, your, your summons and oh, it just looks so good. And I love all the little enemies in there as well. So this is something that I really want to play and just experience and finish it. And hopefully we'll see a second title in this series. That is, that would be a, a dream come true. Next up we have this one here, Mass Effect Andromeda. Now this one here is something that I've been wanting to play for quite some time. I think I got really put off and I, you know, I've always been someone that's just like, I don't really look into reviews too much because often it will just kind of not make me want to play a game or sometimes it will be the opposite and make me want to play a game. Um, I know that sounds very confusing and it is inside my head right now as well, but yeah, I really enjoyed the, you know, the first three Mass Effect games on the, and I played them back on the PlayStation 3 of all things. And when this came out, I just hesitated on it, so I heard that you know it wasn't all that crash hot, people were having some issues. So I thought, you know what, I'll just wait for it to come cheaper. And I think I ended up picking this up for like fifteen dollars, which I thought was an absolute steal. But then, you know, looking out there, there's still a, a huge fan base for this game, and I really do want to support it because you know I think that we do need Mass Effect um, to stay within our lives. So I don't want to lose this series. So I do want to give it a go and just see what my opinions are on it and whether I like it or not. So anyway, if you played this game and you enjoyed it or didn't enjoy it, let me know what your thoughts are. This next one here really went under my radar for some reason and I picked it up for absolutely dirt cheap and it still is. If you're in Australia, go on EB Games, I think it was like $20 something, uh, which is very cheap over here, I must admit. Uh, 
you know, pay, PlayStation 5 games can go anywhere up to like 90 to $100 plus here, it's ridiculous. But anyway, this is just a really cool, I guess, modern sort of JRPG, and I'm really liking it so far. It's, um, it's not the uh, the most detailed game um, by any means, but it's just something about it that just really just keeps you drawn in to keep wanting to play it. So you get to the, I found myself getting to the save um, areas of the game, and it's been like, you know what, I might just play another little bit and another little bit, and then before you know it, it's like I really should go to sleep. I'm gonna be uber tired for work tomorrow. So that is a good thing. So this is definitely a game that I want to complete in 2022. And I know I'm kind of cheating because I've started, but trust me guys, um, I've still got a lot of gameplay with this one here to still finish off. Now this next one is something I know that Jess would be wanting to play with me, and that is Assassin's Creed Origins. When Ever you throw in a game that has that sort of Egyptian vibe to it, I'm always interested. So this I'm super keen on and I can't wait to see what some of the enemies are. I'm hoping there will be some sort of like mummies in this. I have no idea. Um, there might not be, but I just love the fact that this is set in Egypt and I can't wait just to, you know, sink my teeth into this. Now, this one is another game that I started, um, probably got a couple hours in, um, really enjoying it, and for some reason put it down, but I do want to finish this. It's the Artelia Sophie. Now, this was the first game that was recommended to me by a great channel called Food for Dogs, um, a lady from New Zealand who has an, you know, an amazing knowledge when it comes to this title title here of this series anyway and this was one that she recommended me and I definitely want to play this and then get into playing my other Atelier games that I have got factory sealed still up in my collection. Um, it's just a really sort of fun um, JRPG slash you know alchemy sort of game where you're creating sort of like different spells and that sort of thing there. Um, it just looks really, really nice. You know, some real cutesy characters. Probably the only downfall I found was when I was playing the game um, so far is that some of the areas seem to be a little bit bland, but um, the story really makes up for that. And I'm always like that. If you know, even if the if the area is a little bit bland, as long as the story makes up for it, then I kind of get a little bit of grace in that regard. But looking forward to playing that. Now this one here. This one here, guys, it's a Final Fantasy game that I have been... I picked it up when it first came out, um, way back in PS2 days. And I, it just sat there, and I never got around to playing it. I don't know why. It's... I, I honestly, I when, back in the day, I used to be a real JRPG snob. And I, I, I'll tell you why. It used to be like, I was only for turn base. Only for turn base. It was like, if it wasn't turn base, I don't want to know about it. And I'll look at that old, the old me and I go, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> you really are. Because I really enjoy modern JRPGs now, sometimes even a little bit more than the traditional turn base. And that game I'm talking about is Final Fantasy XII. Now, this really brought a difference in the it was more you had free roaming around you could run around and then go in and attack your monsters and that was very different um, for the traditional old school Final Fantasy players like myself so for some reason I put it down never got around playing it and I have no joke guys I've got two copies of it in my collection uh, so I have no excuse <laughs> to not play this I really want to I've heard some good things about this and let me know below if you've enjoyed Final Fantasy XII. I am looking forward to playing that. Now, this one was a, it's a game I've had since basically the launch of the of PS5, and I just never really, ha you know, felt the the real excitement to go play it for some reason. I don't know why because I loved the first title, and that's Spider-Man Miles Morales and. I just went and saw the new Spider-Man. Oh my fucking god, it is probably one of the best Marvel movies I have ever seen. If you haven't seen it, please do. I won't spoil anything for you, trust me, but go and see it. But this, I really want to play and just, you know, just discover more of the Spider-Man world and looking forward to seeing some of the, you know, new enemies within the, within the title. And I can tell you what, I can't wait for that new Wolverine game. I cannot wait for the new Wolverine, but this is something that I do want to finish in 2022. 
Lastly, we have this one here. We have Yee's Memories of Cell Setter. Now, this series has just, I have fallen in love with, and that love came from Johnny Millennium, Happy Con Star Gamer, when he did um, a number of videos talking about how he loved this series. And um, I trusted his judgment on that, picked it up, and wow, was I just blown away by this. And I, I'm so excited to be able to, you know, look up there and see that I have four, this one include four years games in my PS4 collection. Uh, the other three I still need to play at some stage. But I've played a little bit of Yee's Tales of Cell Setter on the Vita. Didn't get around to finishing it, so I picked up the, on the PS4. I want to be able to play it on the bigger screen and just really enjoy it for what it is. And this I am just really looking forward to playing. I've kind of probably leave it towards the end because this is probably one of the ones I'm more excited for than the other other games. Um, big fan of JRPGs. So really, 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 really can't wait to play this. Um, Yee's Memories of Soul Setter, definitely worth picking up if you haven't, guys. Um, yeah, so that's going to be my game number 10 for 2022. Well, there we have it, guys. There is my nice stack there of games I am planning to complete in 2022. Please, by all means, do a response video to this. Leave me a comment below of your top 10 games you hope to complete in 2022. And let me know throughout the year how you're going with that list. Come back to this video and tell me. I'd love to know the updates. And at the end of the year, we're going to go see how we finished up for the year. Did we manage to get through the 10 games or did we fail? I tell you what, guys, I'm going to give it a real red hot go and try my best to complete all 10 of these games. All right, guys, I'm Gunnar Us Gaming. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, fools. See you later.